Welcome back! In this devlog I thought we could take a moment to check out our testing approach for this project, which consists of test-driven development. So to reiterate a little bit about what I've mentioned in the past, the project that we're working on has the approach of uh, going about our development in the way of first finding out a test case and then from that test case we write our code so here looking at our code this is a couple of test cases i have and these are just for demonstration purposes and they're very simple so we have one test over here where we're saying we're gonna be driving a car to increase the distance it has traveled so we create a car which is over the type of volvo class we drive it for five which is a time which in this case is seconds and then we check against to see has the car distance traveled further than zero so that's what the first test does here then the second test over here is the same thing it's creating a volvo test car it's driving it for five seconds and then we're checking to see if it has traveled exactly 50 units so here we have two examples of tests that we could have for example, created for our code. So the approach that we would be taking is then the test first and the code after. So we have a test grouped up in three different parts. We have a given, which is our state condition to have the test in. And then we do something in the test, which is the when category here. And then we have the then category, which is where we validate against a expected result if these tests were to not comply with this logic then we would get an error message over here saying that it, it is not matching up against what we're expecting so the point of this is first off to get a sense of what we want the code to do so if we have a test where we create where we want to check uh, to see how far it has traveled or, or that it has traveled at all we would maybe think, okay, we want to have a, a car, or maybe we have already created it, so we create that class, uh, or, or that variable for that class, uh, object. And then we say, okay, we want to have a function that says drive, and we want to take in a variable that is the, the time in seconds. Maybe that makes sense for us. So the first thing we will be learning when we code like this is that we are not adapting the tests to the code, but we're adapting the, the code to the tests. If these tests become too unwieldy, too large, too many steps to prepare something, or maybe reaching the, the information or calling the information becomes too cumbersome, you will find it out in the test pretty quickly. So if this is what we expect it to be. Now, this might not be the final version, but if we expect we want to have a function that says drive, and that is how easy we want it to do to drive the car, then we will then code to match that. So if we were to look at the code now that is written for this, it's not very much. We have a base class called car. It has a default car speed, and it has a default travel the distance, which we set to zero. Then we have a function now, which we know we want to have from the test. So we write the code for the function drive with its input of seconds. And then we write whatever logic that we want to have to correspond to what we want to achieve. In this case, we want to increase the distance traveled by the car speed multiplied by the seconds that we have driven. Now, what are some of the benefits of this? Well, we want to continuously reiterate on our code. We want to continuously change things when we feel something is named poorly, something doesn't feel like it's matching somewhere. We want to um, improve how we get access to functions. We might want to rewrite complete sections or, or classes or systems, essentially. When we do that, our tests that we have created will start failing. To demonstrate this, I have a little bit of code down here. So let's copy this code and put it into our class here. So here we can see we have a class which is derived from the class car. And in here, I am now telling the code, 
I want to override how the drive function works for the Volvo in contrast to the car. So when I want the Volvo to drive, I want to have the distance traveled to be the car speed multiplied by the seconds driven plus one, for example. Now this example doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's just to show you that the, the, the functionality can change as you go along. Now, if I were to press Ctrl and S to save, we can see immediately in our demonstration test now it's turned red. That's because uh, all the tests along with all the hot reload that AngelScript does to Unreal Engine, it will only also go through all of these and validate to see that they're still functioning. Meaning that we can feel very secure about our changes because we know that if we have broken something, our tests will pick it up. In this case, we can see here that this line of 22 here says the assert equals does not match any longer. And if we move over it, we will be able to see that it's getting unexpected. This is what we are, have coded into the test that we want to have it reach. But the actual uh, value, which is the test car distance traveled, is 51. So we have a mismatch there about what we are expecting and what we are actually getting. This allows us to quickly identify that something is no longer working and we can see if it's just a minor typo or if we have uh, done something wrong and possibly even the test might need updating because it's not completely corresponding to the functionality anymore. So it, like I said, it gives a very good sense of uh, security because this, in addition to also, of course, having version handling in Git, allows you to uh, brave the exploration of changing your code in pretty substantial ways. And I would claim that that is pretty good when, especially this early, when not everything is solidified, is very valuable. Uh, as we progress and continuously uh, develop these classes and this functionality and these systems, they will become more and more solid and eventually they will not be changing as much, which means that they will end up in a situation where those uh, tests are more or less fixed unless we have some functionality somewhere else where they might be breaking again, which we will then immediately be finding. We won't need to compile everything to find out that something is broken. We'll see it pretty much immediately. So now this was a very basic test just to show you how we approach things and let's just take and look at one of our examples that we actually have right now. So since we're currently working along with the, uh, the lore of Warhammer, what we have here is the test clause for promoting a scout marine into a space marine. So we have functionality of creating a chapter, we create a scout company within that chapter, we create a squad within that company, and then we add the squad into the company. And then we create a human, which is a combatant in uh, a squad normally, so a space marine. And then we add it to the squad and then we move it around and see, is the functionality essentially the same as we are expecting? So if we move a scout, a marine into a reserve company making it into a proper space marine is that space marine now enlisted in the new squad essentially and the new company that it has been assigned to so as we go along we create more and more of these tests and have them also separated into separate files to keep things a little bit more clean so we have a test file and we have a file for the actual functionality and we keep them separate uh, so that it's easy to follow. We try to guide ourselves by having uh, classes that are pretty small, but uh, more of the classes so that the classes can have as much specialized uh, functionality as possible and allow each little piece of functionality to be as simple as possible so that the complexity overall doesn't get out of hand. Anyway, I hope that this small insight into test-driven development, if that was new to you, has proven uh, useful and maybe a little bit inspiring for you to test it out. And uh, yeah, that's all for now. Keep on learning. 
take care hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future that is all for now keep on learning take care